Chainsaw Man at its heart is chaotic, and if chaos can be a ladder, then that ladder is Chainsaw Man. To be clear, Tatsuki Fujimoto isn't what I would call a good writer sometimes, and normally wouldn't even be considered a writer that I originally thought would make it to the big leagues, but I was wrong. Though I do believe writers like, hold up a sec, I'm about to butcher these names, Migahisha Kanishiki, Kasuhina Minami, Toshiro Yoshi Iri, Lina Elm, Tsubasa Fukichi, Nafus, Jaku Amano, Matsukako Yu, Tasuyashi Taki, Shinji Mito, Shin Suwada, Atashi Nakayama, who has amazing artwork by the way, Nana Tatsuki, who again has amazing artwork, and of course I gotta throw my best girl in there, Matsura Durama, who is the writer of Kasein, which is a manga I gushed over from beginning to end, and as a curveball I'll throw in there Tutsumu Takadashi, who has written a lot of manga, but none of them has received anime adaptations, but if I were to see an anime adaptation from anything he's written, I would like to see an anime adaptation of the Sonic Boom Islands, aka Detonation Islands, which is an awesome book. I'm gonna be 100% real here, if George Aves and Matsumumi's Rainbow can get an anime adaptation, there's no reason why the Sonic Boom Islands cannot have an anime adaptation. And while I'm on the topic, why isn't Homunculus an anime? I'm talking about Homunculus written by Hideo Yamato, which is amazing. I mean, we can have Monster. I'd like to believe everyone knows Monster written by Noikoi Urasawa, who also wrote Master Keaton and and 20th Century's voice, which also doesn't have an anime adaptation along with Pluto. I mean, what is going on? What are they doing at those anime studios? I mean, these are easy slam dunks, but that one guy in the corner wants to make an adaptation of I got teleported to another world with my smartphone. This is ridiculous. But clearly, there's a lot of good indie creators out there that I hope will eventually get mainstream love and attention for their tenacity for creating good books for their niche fan base and communities. The last book that I thought anyone would care about would have been Chainsaw Man, but again, I was wrong. But like many, I hope that whenever any of these creators get an anime adaptation for their works, especially Chainsaw Man, which is on the horizon, that it's not x Arms by Crunchyroll, which will most likely go down in history as the worst anime ever to be made in existence. I mean, if you thought the piss pool that contained Handshakers, Berserk, the re re adaptation as a CGI PowerPoint presentation, and God forbid, Mars of Destruction, the anime where a character got their head blown off by a barrage of bullets, dropped dead, and had the supporting characters take her to the hospital to see if she was alright? That show was stupid! <laughs> the characters were stupid, and the animation was terrible, and I distinctly remember the characters never blinked, and it was the creepiest thing ever, which was bad enough for your mental health, but I don't know anyone with a brain who'd greenlight x charms because whichever executive okayed this show was fed the biggest torrent spoonful of bullshit, dog shit, and garble baby food that ever was because x Harm is, and forever will be, god-awful. I can't explain it, it's just so much doo-doo. Oh, oh, wait a minute, there's a script here. Hold up a second. But like I was saying previously, Fujimoto's prior books before writing Chainsaw Man were kinda on the spectrum. From the flaming train wreck that was Fire Punch, with its spicy scenes of incestual sibling relations by choice and blood relations by complete coincidence, to the main villain wanting to genocide a population of the human race to create a Star Wars utopia, to characters having sex with animals for the laws, and a main character that has the attention span of a sloth and the intelligence of a shit surrounding flies, or as the main cast of the story is as interesting as watching paint on a wall dry, you could say I thought we were all reading the same train wreck, but there's a huge community of people that would disagree and I would argue with them if I'd cared enough, but as I've learned from my read over healer video, people don't care about my opinion. But comparing Fujimoto to his prior work up against his magnum opus, Chainsaw Man, it's all about the same. The characters all resemble people that got drunk, kneeled over, and received a concussion, making their skewered sanity a focal point of every character that's in this book, besides Dance Dance Revolution, Kobane. Meaning, Chainsaw Man is about everything you'd expect, being jam-packed with blood, gore, violence, and profanity, until it isn't and tackles non-shonen life subjects like Devil Man and chats up its readers about depression, isolation, and the meaning of living a fulfilling life, and the levels of humanity that can exist at times, the inherent goodness of humans, with all its characters chasing one thing like 177013, happiness. And that's the problem. Though all the characters want to be happy, disregarding their allegiances to good or evil in a way that pushes the boundaries on the human condition to achieve said happiness to feel fulfilled and wanted and loved. It's like all the characters are committing crimes when all the characters try to drown out their circumstances with constant escapism, eventually to find solace and joy they always
always wanted in each other. There's this moment after the Bat Devil arc that makes a compilation of everything this series is supposedly about, wrapped up into one chapter after a train of events that has the main protagonist feeling up power, the Blood Devil. Denji comes to the realization that after crossing multiple thresholds of getting what he wanted, feeling the adrenaline and the thrill from the journey of getting what he wanted, once he got what he wanted, he feels hollow and empty and he wonders if this emptiness and insignificance will apply to all his wants and desires, coming to realize that having an actual, tangible, and emotional connection to someone is what makes the world worth living in, and finding that one person that connects you to the world makes it better living in than choosing to escape from it with meaningless sex and entertainment or drinking to numb the feeling of isolation. So yes, in Chainsaw Man, after going on a crusade and busting some demon heads, life's about drinking with your friends and enjoying yourselves, chasing your dreams and even aspirations with the people that make you happy from a genuine place of sincerity, goodness, and love that makes it even better. For the sake of characters who constantly fight their depression, isolation, worse impulses, and fear on a daily basis, it's good that they're bettering their lives and the lives of those they care about for the sake of each other and not an empty gesture because they care. Whereas I don't. Meaning, I don't like Denji as a main character, but the supporting characters that make up Chainsaw Man as a book makes it interesting enough to read because the pilot chapter is, let's say, lacking. In the first chapter of Chainsaw Man, the status quo of everything is showcased throughout the run of this book is put on full display with the main character being subjected to extreme poverty, which in turn explains his ignorance to his surroundings, thereby explaining his poor communication skills and lack of social crafts, having the decorum of an elephant stampeding into a room, living in a shack on the outskirts of the city. And the gravy of all of this is that the main man, Dingy, is stuck with a crippling debt that forces him into a hazardous occupation which is devil hunting with his chainsaw dog. That's totally poggers, but what's not poggers is how servile and submissive his character is, as he's constantly willing to degrade himself to accomplish his goal, and that he has the intelligence of an acorn. An example of this would be later in a story arc where Dingy empower or training with their teacher, and they come to realize brute strength isn't going to be enough for them to triumph over their opponent, so they'll need to fight smarter instead of harder. So how do they accomplish this? They wear glasses. Because, you get it? Smart people wear glasses. <laughs> now, I'm not gonna lie. When I first read this, it was really funny. Almost as funny as that one part where Power crashed Kobane's car, but this is the legit intelligence of this character functioning at full capacity, and it's something he should feel bad about. I think it's a good thing to note that his character goes to high school at the end of the series, but Denji's character is so stupid. He reminds me of most of my classmates in high school who were doing 7th grade math instead of pre-calculus, and everyone who was reading Dr. Seuss instead of William Shakespeare's Othello and giving literary analysis to the class. So if I were to judge Chainsaw Man or Denji by American standards, and if he went to my high school, I guess it kind of be realistic and he'd fit right in. Then she reminds me of a student from one of my English classes. We had an assignment to read Edgar Allan Poe and analyze some of his work, but because it's high school and nobody reads and everyone just uses spark notes, at least when I went. The guy, let's just call him Dingy, he went up in front of the class and gave a five minute summary of the cast of the Amontimonio, and at the end of the story, the teacher asked, well, you know, that's a nice summary and all, but what does it all mean? And the guy literally said, it means he's dead. <laughs> It was the funniest thing I've ever heard. He said he's dead. That was his analysis of the entire story. It was hilarious. And I sat there and I laughed. And I laughed. Best moment of high school for me. I mean, Dingy wasn't wrong, but there was a little bit more to the story than just that. So if Dingy from Chainsaw Man ever went to American high school, yeah, he fit right in. Japanese high school, not really sure, but yeah, I can agree. Dingy's funny, but he's not my cup of tea as a main protagonist. If I were to say anything about his character that's positive or redeeming is the consensual relationships he has with other women throughout the series. You see, after watching and reading, read you of a healer. Oh yeah! I think I wanna have sexual relations! I needed a palate cleanser, a saltine cracker to my champagne per se, because the series was just too raw and uncomfortable for my delicate mind to handle, of course. But I'm perfectly fine with a freak show zombie lesbian orgy, and I'm not sure how they got this splash page onto Shonen Jump, but I can't show it on YouTube, but I can say for sure if this was in a magazine that I got weekly, damn straight I'm a read Chainsaw Man, but what was I saying? Oh yeah, sex. The kissing field Chainsaw Man endorses is horny women who are down. 
down to fuck all the time, but aren't so horny that it ruins a story like High School DxD or Testament of Sister New Devil. Think of Chainsaw Man like Heaven's Lost Property. It's horny, but it's funny, digestible, and there's actual reasons for why the characters are the way they are, and they aren't cardboard cutouts, they're actual people. Hooray! But more on that later. And it's not unexpectedly random either. Catch a woman with her pants down, kind of horny, and fabricate artificial circumstances to expose the said character to lootness, kind of horny, of characters with their tits hanging out and wearing tight swimsuits with ludicrous panty shots, kind of horny. Saint Soul Man is a kind of wholesome intervention between character and lootness, and it's better fan service than anime and manga fans usually get, and it's better than what I normally see, so... Yeah. If I were to give an example, if you're watching an isekai anime, if a man walked into a woman and the woman was half dressed, of course the man would be submissive and say, oh man, I can't watch this, there's a naked girl in front of me. But in Chainsaw Man, Dingy's completely okay with that, and the women that are doing the sexual acts are completely okay with that, and they actually have normal conversations like normal people. So I gotta give a little hand clap right there, hand clap, hand clap. And I would like to mention, Fujimoto stories are a bit crazy. When I say crazy, they're PCP crazed, pixie dust kind of crazy. That's the only logic to a conclusion that can be made here is that Jump Editorial either in place very tough restrictions onto what he can and can't have in the story, or he's actually holding back for some kind of reason. But again, he somehow convinced Jump, Shonen Jump, that having a lesbian monster girl orgy splash page color page was an okay, so I don't know what happened there, but he did it. But because the pilot is already out of the way with us all learning that Dingy had a craptastic life and was lured to an abandoned building by the zombie devil who turned some Yakuza's into zombies zombies to of course kill Dingy, just for him to unexpectedly transform into Chainsaw Man with Pucha, his chainsaw dog being transformed into his heart, to then thrash the zombie devils and kill everything else just because he can, to then meet Mikame, he gives him two choices of either being killed or becoming his pet, which he agrees to because he'd be getting bread with jam and other things for breakfast, so why not? He has nothing else better to do. Now, this is where I'm going to make several leaps in logic and reason, but I'm going to say it anyway because Fujimoto is a huge movie buff, and I like movies too and all of his books are littered with literary and movie references. But the main reason I dislike Denji's character is that his character seems to share a similar characteristics to an amalgamation of movie protagonists from the cosmic horror and cosmic supernatural horror movie genre. Now because I wouldn't want to burden anyone with super obscure old movies like Motel in Hell and The Baby, which unironically fits Denji's character with a teenage boy or in the case of The Baby, an adult man with the apparent mental capacity of an infant, I'll reference recent movies as examples. Mandy. Yes, that movie featuring Nicolas Cage turning people into puddles of blood because his girlfriend died and going off his nut as if he was on acid. And Mandy as a movie is a tragedy about a recovering alcoholic and a dope fiend settling down with his previously abused, now not abused girlfriend on a broke back mountain until their love is ruined by an insane cult's lust for power, which in turn fuels the main narrative of the story. Revenge not for the sake of violence, hate, and destruction, but as an expression of sadness, grief, and love to the color that has left the main character character's world, which connected him to it, being not only his everything, but being the only thing that ever mattered to him. Kind of like Aki's search and many characters' quest for revenge, and how most characters put objects and people at the center of their personal universes and self for existing, just like Denji and the main antagonist Mikami. But more on that later, especially more stuff on Mikami. What's important to know is that in the world of Chainsaw Man, the world works like our contemporary world, except the fact that devils exist, which are conceptual aberrational creatures from Hell, and according to the lore, when a devil is born, it's given a name. The more that name is feared, the more powerful that devil is. And if a devil dies in hell, they come to the human world. Once they die in the human world, the devils return to hell. Thus, they rotate in and out of these two worlds, which effectively makes them immortal. Now, this is where things get interesting. There are devils that embody emotions that are found naturally within the human populace. For example, the gun devil is accumulation of everyone's fear and destruction caused by guns later throughout human history. And the future devil, which is an abstract emotion of doubt and uncertainty created by people worrying about how their life will unfold, which came into existence as an abstract thought, therefore making a precognitive or future devil, with the most strongest devils being the embodiment of an idea that's more common or well known. For example, in Fate, Saber is so powerful because the legend of King Arthur is so well known. In Saw Man, the gun devil can kill millions of people in seconds because guns have a destructive history within our history that's, yes, powerful, but 
but with even less common beliefs in a specific idea, can still potentially create a powerful devil. Now everything that I'm about to say next is not made up. It's an actual philosophical line of thinking of transient thought. The reason why you don't see it a lot in media is due to the very nature of how complicated it is and how hard it is to base a story around it. Assumably. The most recent example of a story that uses this train of thinking is the Department of Truth written by James Tinian and of course Chainsaw Man. But to continue this idea of Fujimoto's love of movies, we're going to talk about recent horror movies that use this train of thought. The movie The Empty Man, which recently came out, uses this philosophical idea of thinking, which gives a really good example of this philosophy in line of belief, that thought plus concentration plus time equals flesh. This is the same line of thinking that James Tinian's Department of Truth uses, but with a slight deviation. Thought plus concentration plus time equals reality. To hookily summarize James Tinian's Department of Truth, the story revolves around a character that studies conspiracy theories, and he discovers that all conspiracy theories are potentially real, from the JFK assassination to the flat earth theory, and of course reptilian shapeshifters on earth. The crux of the story is that there is a global organization called the Department of Truth, which regulates what people believe in through media manipulation and removing people who believe in rather obscure and dangerous things, like cults who worship demons. They're stopping them from bringing it into reality from them worshiping it and constantly believing that what they believe is true because eventually over time it will become true and it will become reality. But returning back to The Empty Man because it directly relates to Chainsaw Man that thought plus concentration plus time equals flesh literally means the aberration that is quote unquote The Empty Man or in this case the devils in Chainsaw Man is only real within individual people's minds however by expanding what we think through our words and communicating with one another about something over and over and over with repetition we indirectly or intentionally manifest that thought into reality essentially using the power of our minds to believe something into existence the devils within chainsaw man for example and that of the existence of the being the empty man in the movie the empty man or in the case of chainsaw man again the devils that exist because there's so many of them and it's so ingrained into the sum of all human thought because devils are perpetuated throughout the world that they exist because people believe in them because they actually exist and that keeps creating a rotation of existence through thought meaning it only takes a few devils to make many i.e. explaining the angel devil, the bat devil, the bomb devil, ghost devil, pig devil, and anything else you or someone else potentially is afraid of or thinks about on a daily basis becoming a potential Devil. To reiterate its existence through thought, but with this line of thinking we ultimately come to the end question. What is real? What is reality? And the answer to that is don't think about it because I don't want to be talking about this forever and I'm watering it down a lot of this. But to use an example of how everything potentially can become a devil within Chainsaw Man, everyone is aware of Nietzsche's famous quote, if you stare into the abyss it stares back into you, which is a cliche and something someone or everyone has heard dances of times but the real question is when was the last time you've actually thought about what it means what is the abyss what is staring into you and what exactly causes it to do that or where does it come from and when asking these normal logical questions to this idea or phrase we thought as something someone edgy would say becomes something terrifying and we inadvertently bring whatever people's collective perception or what they collectively perceive as the abyss onto ourselves and into reality. And in Chainsaw Man, this is supposedly the Darkness Devil, but it's in my belief it should have been named the Abyss Devil considering how Chapter 71 depicts Powers PTSD from encountering the Darkness Devil, believing that it's everywhere, which completely paralyzes her character with fear. Now I have to mention this, Chainsaw Man has the ability to eat concepts and ideas and completely erase them from reality. For example, like AIDS, the Nazis, so would it be possible for Chainsaw Man to eat the concept of devils that's killing himself in the idea of devils slash demons? Yes and no. No, in the idea that demons and devils are directly tied to the idea of evil, which is something that we humans have been giving meaning to since the beginning of history and our existence. And if you were to destroy the concept of evil, well, on its best day, our interpretation of good or a good society or civilization would create a world like the anime psychopaths but without the Sybil system essentially creating a world where ideas 
best thing for us. But even in a utopian-like society, like psychopaths, characters like Shogo exist, an actual psychopath that lacks humanity because of his differing belief on what's good and what's evil. And ultimately, a character like Shogo would appear in this utopian society where ideas think for you due to the very fact that he has a very skewed outlook on reality. Now, it would be yes in the idea that Chainsaw Man could eat all the concepts of evil in the world effectively and potentially neutering humanity from what makes humans human, and we all become mindless sheep of little ways to express ourselves because Chainsaw Man just destroyed the concept of thought. Think of it this way, if Chainsaw Man eats the concept of death, nobody can die, but the downside to that is the world becomes like that anime, Sunday without God. So yes, it can be done, no in the idea that it would work out without any ill side effects. But what's the next movie? Uh, Wounds. So how can I explain this? A group of teenagers find a geonistic book of rituals and discover that by inflicting wounds on the people, they can summon a demon from a the reality and has supernatural powers and a higher sense of enlightenment, but because human psyches want to live and not be possessed by god knows what from the zero dimension, the ritual only works on certain people. So the kids hatch a plan to do the ritual because they have nothing else better to do, meet the main protagonist, a loser wasting his life when sleepwalking through life, and does what he does because he doesn't have anything else better to do, and the host of the most likely super evil pagan god. Blah 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 happens, the kids almost kinda summon the evil pagan god the first time, but it kinda sorta doesn't work, then by the end of the movie, the main character's life sucks so much and he's such a loser not wanting to do anything of his life which was created by circumstance from the kids meddling in his life, but he was kinda on that path already. Anyway, the main character finds his life hollow, and in the hopes of finding some kind of purpose in life, he pretty much says, why not be possessed by an evil god thing that will most likely kill millions of people, opens his mouth, and he accepts the evil god and he takes over his body. The end. Now, what does this have to do with Chainsaw Man? First of all, if any of this sounds familiar, it's because it's not not the first time I'm talking about this philosophy gunk on this channel, remember? But again, what does this have to do with Chainsaw Man? What does all of these main characters from all of these properties seem to have in common? In Alan Wake, the protagonist is utterly obsessed with his work after suffering from writer's block and travels to a spooky lake where things come to life and writes a book and has the reality of his own horror books come to life after coming to a realization his family was dead, which he had forgotten. He tries to use the power to rewrite reality so they live, but in the process brings into existence a supernatural entity that wants to destroy the world using the main protagonist's misery, tragedy, and sadness against him, and oh yeah, taking over his body so he can do all these evil things. And how does he do that? He tries to mentally cripple him by ruining his life and destroying the lives of those around him. Because the supernatural entity itself is both Alan Wake and the negative personification of himself. In Control, which is actually connected to the Alan Wake universe and actually has a tie-in to Alan Wake, which elaborates more on the story of Alan Wake, but in Control, because we're talking about Control, Jesse's fate in shot who was marred in tragedy when she and her brother Dylan find an old slide projector which had the ability to open doorways to other dimensions. You can guess where this is going, but I'm gonna say it anyway. They eventually encounter a supernatural being who talks to them via telepathy and wants them to do things. Then after more shenanigans and some intervention from a secret government organization, Dylan is taken away and Jesse is stained with guilt which leads her onto the journey to the said secret organization's headquarters, which is inside of a building called the Department of Control, where her past guilt is used against her against supernatural entities that want to turn the world upside down, and guess what? They want to use her body to do it. The MZ Man. TLDR, the main character isn't real and is really a Tupla, a supernatural creature that embodies collective thought, and it's revealed that the MC is a vessel for the Empty Man who is a blank slate of all his memories and relationships created by the cult, blah blah blah, tragedy, blah blah blah, loss, blah blah blah, bad relationships, blah blah blah, he feels hollow. You get what I'm saying here or do I have to actually say it? Chainsaw Man is about Denji, a boy who represses his memory of him killing his own father, which he believed was a suicide, which was a story created by the Yakuza, 
Yakuza in order to have Denji inherit his father's debt, which in turn creates the extreme poverty he lives in and his hollowed out personality until Denji is possessed by the Chainsaw Devil, and it becomes Mikamai's mission to deliberately provide Denji with a family and various sources of happiness only to rip and tear them away in order to break him, ultimately allowing the Chainsaw Devil to take over him completely in hopes of Mikami, the control devil, controlling Chainsaw Man in turn to save the world by allowing him to eating certain concepts to make human life good. But as we discussed priorly, that's a bad idea because the anime Sunday without God. And yes, necessarily maybe your intentions are good, but removing concepts from reality or trains of thought restricting free will, that's not necessarily a good thing. Yes, removing the Nazis, AIDS, HPV, and other diseases is good, but removing certain concepts from human thought will have some ill-intended effects. Again, the best examples of this would be Psychopaths, where the thought police can literally throw you in jail for having bad thoughts, and Sunday Without God, where the concept of death is removed from reality and no one can die. But ultimately, the point I'm trying to get here is that Chainsaw Man, Denji's character, is basically the recycled plot of The Empty Man, Wounds, Daniel Isn't Real, Alan Wake, and several more movies I can think of but won't name, but in reverse, then forward again. In reverse, in the idea that where most popular horror movies with this plot would degrade the character, Mikimi is building him up just to degrade him. Not to say Chainsaw Man is a bad story, and it isn't, it's very enjoyable. I'm just saying I don't like the main character because I've seen this plot dozens of times, whereas everyone else in the cast of Chainsaw Man, I adore. It's the aspects of the supporting cast pre-established relationships in the character drama like Aki's relationship with Himeno that always make the story more interesting than what it is, elevating the fights and emotional baggage they carry into battle or just characters talking to one another. It's enjoyable. They sound like people. And oh yeah, I forgot to mention this because I was literally talking about everything else, but the human characters in Chainsaw Man are kinda cool too. Humans are able to, of course, cut devils to death like they were playing Devil May Cry, but they can make contracts with devils and use their abilities by giving up parts of themselves to be able to use the devil's powers. For example, you can give up your eyes and hands and etc etc etc, and you can use the devil's hands or eyes and etc etc etc. If you need an example, think of it this way. It's kinda like that old semi hentai manga I talked about forever ago, where that woman gave up her JJ for some demon powers and I laughed about it. I'm gonna laugh about it now. <laughs> oh my gosh, that brings up memories. <laughs> Ah, uh, ooh, that manga. Woman gave up her gusha. Mm -mm -mm. If you don't remember, which nobody likely will, but I imagine everyone does because the strange etchy and hentai books are primarily the reason anyone would sub to me, which I talk about on a yearly basis. It's that manga where the main character got trapped in another world with his family and his non-blood related, non-blood related sisters, of course, and it's immediately revealed that the father of the family was like a genuine scumbag and he was a con artist and the only reason why he married the woman that he did and had so many kids with her, due to the very fact that he wanted financial security, he told his son this, and he was trying to put the moves on to him to basically put on the moves to other women and be just like him and enable him in that way. But of course he died and they got teleported to this other world so they weren't able to do so. And I'm not making this up, like on chapter 4, main character is already blowing his stepmom's back out. It's crazy! <laughs> He's already blowing her back out! <laughs> I'm not making this up. I need to start reading these books again on this channel. It's just too funny. And I just paused recording and I just looked it up. Remember that Slice of Life series I talked about from a while ago where the girl makes a deal with the devil and gains the ability to freeze time? But like Redo of a Healer, she has to do the nasty like Eugene, the main character from Redo of a Healer, with other people to replenish her freezing time abilities, but unfortunately becomes a Eugene addict like from Redo of a Healer as much as the main character does it to other women there, the girl does it to men there. Turns out that book got a sequel. I don't know how! I'm guessing it's about that time of year when I upload those kinds of videos. I mean, the books are funny and everything, because that's how bad they are. They're so bad that they're funny, but people need to stop making up excuses for these degenerate characters. <laughs> stop making excuses! But returning back to Chainsaw Man. Oh wow, I can't believe this is still me talking about the first arc, and I don't even like the first arc. But the best thing about the first arc is that power is introduced into the story. The thing that defines her character is her unbelievably low intelligence in denial and acceptance of responsibility for actions, nor does she learn any lesson from any of the bad things that she does being extremely prideful in the fact that she's not intelligent. So the question becomes what happens when two idiots collide? The plot moves in stupid directions because after Dinji finally realizes his goal of eating bread and living in a decent location, he wants to grab hold of some female watermelons, which Power agrees to if Dinji saves her cat from the Bat Devil, which of course he does, claims his reward, and feels an existential emptiness which circles back to what I talked about.
not at the start of the video, but yeah, that's the end of part one, if there will ever be a part two, which will be rather difficult because I'm incredibly lazy, and I know nobody watches these, but I kind of have a lot to say about Devil Man, I mean Chainsaw Man, so there will most likely, if it does continue, have multiple parts, but we'll see.